Ah, yeah, blocked. <laughs> yeah, that tree. It's just kind of funny. I can't tell where it came from. Uh, there's no place that that tree's too small. And that's the only tree. I don't know. Can't find where it came from. It's just kind of strange to have a tree that falls and you can't really see where it came from. Anyway, yeah, it really is kind of irritating. I was going to do this video in pieces, you know, migrating from spot to spot just because the leaves are kind of kind of crunchy. And uh, this probably isn't going to work. We'll see. All right. Uh, yes. Anyway, um, so I guess this is the first spot I'll do the video from since I'm stuck here. Uh, I mean, here. Um, so anyway, I was just um, thinking of... Oh, cool. It's breaking some more. All right, so let's sit on it. It's not getting my ass any good anyway. Um, yeah, just kind of an irritating poison ivy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was thinking the first... Just go through the... The basics here of just, you know, what it is that the people are arguing about on the internet. And this is all kind of boils down to something, some sort of, you know, view of some sort of good or bad thing that exists. And, uh, you know, how, how do you define that? Um, you know, what's a reasonable definition of the good or the bad? Um, yeah, there's a big piece off of that tree. Yeah, so that's probably, it came off of that one. And it broke in two places. So that piece broke, and that piece fell off of that piece. Maybe. Well, it's a possibility. I don't know. Anyway, we didn't have that much weather. So it's kind of strange. But, you know, it's rotten. Um, yeah, so we were arguing, like... You know the further out point, but you know because we're really arguing about the center thing, where you start, the beginning, and uh, you know people seem to think, you know even atheists, that there's some sort of intrinsic or fundamental value or purpose or functionality in just the fact that we exist. That somehow there's a value in that, um, and I guess you know the the truer the the more you get to the context, the the you know, in what context are we interesting? You know, we're interesting in the context of yeah, well, compared to a rock, we're interesting. Um, you know, compared to a paramecium, we're interesting. Uh, you know, but are we fundamentally anything better than that? Um, uh, you know, and certain something of enough merit to justify what are sort of obvious uh, negatives that come with our capacity to feel and and uh, you know the capacity to to be in a state that is not a not a good state of being and not a, a comfortable or, or even endurable state um, for some people you know horribly um, viscerally obnoxious um, reality that consciousness has to fall into uh, periodically. Uh, we all get a taste of it, some people more than others, and that's part of the problem, I suspect. Um, but anyway, so, so you get to the basic nature of it, and, and you know, there's all there is is this evolution thing, right? There's, there's nothing more happening here in terms of a creation or a purpose or a function. It's just a process of this universe made up of this junk that, yes, it's here. Don't have a good reason for it to be here, but it's here. And we sort of see that it is not reasonable. I mean, in the sense that it's doing stuff in the, the cosmos that's just this mechanical stuff. It's just this burning and shooting and flying and circling. And there's no reason to it. There's no might have a rhythm, but it doesn't have any reason. Um, it doesn't have any function beyond its mechanical function of just being. So, you know, if you just accept that, we don't need to have an explanation for the, the, the existence of something that 
isn't purposeless, it, I mean, isn't purposeful, isn't overtly intelligent, isn't overtly doing anything that we could see as a soccer game or a chess game or doesn't have any, there's no, uh, there's no, um, not mythology, but there's no methodology, there's no, you can't see anything but very crude mechanisms um, dictating its composition. Uh, and then you get to this evolution thing where this sort of changes the game, you know, that this biology got this capacity to modify blueprints to, um, you know, here's a contextual, again, element where, depending on how you look at it, I mean, you could look at it as, oh, yes, it's progressing, because look, it, it's created more and more complicated organisms, and they're capable of more sophisticated, you know, sentient experience and consciousness and brains and, you know, elaborate interactions in their environment and all that stuff. Or you could look at it as, okay, it's just making survival machines. And obviously tools like scheming is a good survival tool. And how does it make these survival machines? Well, it makes, uh, you know, millions of copies and then it destroys them. And whatever one's the last one standing, yeah, okay, that one does the reproducing, the more reproducing. And that's the system, is this destroy a million to create a survivor so it can be part of a million again and lose. <laughs> you know, and then be part of a million again and lose. And, yeah, you know, just this perpetual, um, you know, gladiator war. It's a... It's an apt description. So if somebody's going to say there's a problem in what I'm saying, well then explain how that's not correct. That that metaphor doesn't adequately describe the mechanism we're part of. So, so anyway, I mean, so this is just, it always boils down to this. I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to have a conversation almost about any subject, you have to boil it down to, well, what's the source of this? What are we here to do or accomplish? And if you just analyze the fact that there's no function in the, in the origin, that we're just standing here now as the winners, so to speak, of four billion years of evolution. So yes, our, our, my genetic code has managed to get here. And like that should mean something beyond the fact that, okay, I'm standing here with the winner's sword as the victor, and what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just perpetuate the game? Just sign up to go into the next arena where I'll be the loser? <laughs> you know, so some other asshole can hold up the sword and say, now what do I do with the sword? What do I do with this victory? And, you know, then, then it just becomes this, another utilitarian reasoned argument that the only thing you have to do here is to prevent how much harm is taking place, to, to find some way to mitigate against the price being paid. Um, and the simplest way to mitigate against it is to not buy anything. So, but anyway, till the next stop. Okay, I'm back. Should be anyway. I have to check. Sorry. Anyway, um, I mean, it almost looks like tic-tac-toe carved into the tree. It's just funny. It's, a, it's just a natural crack, but it's just like a tic-tac-toe board. Anyway, um, so, so there's, the function is crude. We're given this, you know, we can, it, I mean, I don't see any, I, I mean, how can it be rationally argued that we're basically of two minds, you know, a mind creating an agenda, a desire mechanism, and then a mind that's analyzing solutions to our desire problem. You know, I want things, give me a strategy to get them. Um, and that's kind of how we're just at, at, you know, natively eking through our existence. And, uh, you know, some of the people that are, you know, considered philosophers here on YouTube just say these, you know, resort to these natural rules and say, you know, nature makes us something. and somehow we can't overcome that agenda and it's just so <laughs> i mean who 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 can buy that who who buys that idiotic argument that 
you know, we, uh, you know, by nature, you know, we just piss and shit any old place. And obviously we've moderated that behavior. We don't ex excrement <laughs> any old place. We were able to control the function. And obviously we're able to control our desires and we're able to control, um, you know, through, through simple ideas and concepts, knowledge of them that there's appropriate and inappropriate behavior. I mean, it's just not that hard to, to figure that out. And, and it's, it's just a, a matter of figuring it out, of just having some sort of certain knowledge that you have a certain obligation, um, you know, not to shit in the living room, not to shit in your civilization, not to shit in the restaurant where other people are eating, not to, you know, not, you know, it's just not complicated. Is is that somehow an outrageous philosophical statement that we have a, a mind capable of understanding the nuance of our circumstance and that has certain liberty in moderating our behavior by simply giving us some other uh, more uh, competing desire, a competing desire not to be an asshole. So we know that being an asshole is bad then we desire not to be an asshole and we have a simple list of rules to follow not to be an asshole. Um, isn't that what we're doing? Um, you know, and that you understand the, the simple mechanics is that uh, imposing on somebody is being an asshole. Um, you know, investing for them is being an asshole jeopardizing, risking them as being an asshole. You know, you know not to go on the road with a defective vehicle. Um, not, be, not just because it's risk to your own welfare. Somebody might say you're allowed to be that kind of asshole. You're allowed to be a fool and a, an idiot when the only thing on the line is your welfare. But the small little tiny bit of extra intelligence required to realize, well, wait a minute, there's other people on the road. It's not about just me. Um, and that's somehow this requires in-depth philosophical analysis to be able to just say this is the truth of our circumstance, that it's not an if statement, if you have a social obligation, if the other people really exist, if they, this is something we should spend a millisecond worrying about, the ifness of, of other people's existence and the legitimacy of their welfare. Philosophers should pretend we need to spend a nanosecond of computational philosophical time um, resolving the deep if question of the reality <laughs> of other people's existence. I mean, come on. Come on. No, but this is, it's embarrassing for us to have to sit there and have that conversation. This is kind of pretty. Moss, uh, moss is very interesting stuff. Me likey. I gotta get a bag and collect this stuff. And then I can litter my yard with it. And then I'll probably hurt my back. My back is mush lately. I have to fix that. Yeah, I like that. Preserve that for later. <laughs> yeah, preserve it for later. But it does make the barkless trees are nice for sitting. Except you sort of have to look for snakes and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that's enough. Till later. <sighs> Moving on. And such. Ah, yeah, it is. Kind of a lovely spot and such. Anyway, uh, you know where to sit here, but it is quieter. It's the ground. Less leaves here for whatever reason. <laughs> Pathway. Um, that's not a subject. Not very relevant, but that's part of the sub subject is the fact that we're, um, you know, that we're psychologies, <clears throat> you know, trying to do something, you know, that's supposed to be explicit and rational and uh, cautious and careful and uh, you know where ev evidence and, and yeah, evidence is carefully weighed um, 
uh, carefully analyzed, and that's not the nature of our psychology. Our, our psychology reacts to, you know, the sun is in my eyes, and uh, our, like I said, there's some overall mood that's created, and it creates a sensation, and so we're, we live very sensate lives, we're very sensitive, um, and, uh, you know, it's those kinds of subtle reactions, you know, the, this, this tree catches my eye, you know, because it has this, you know, interesting ant-eaten, you know, architecture, and, uh, you know, my brain knows to kind of look for that kind of stuff, because it's always kind of an interesting detail, uh, you know, it's it's both aesthetically and artistically, and then what it represents biologically. So yeah, that's something my psychology tends to see. And so we're all kind of attempting to communicate this fact that there's a path that goes to the right, that hooks to the left, and yet we're doing it in the in this atmosphere where. People are going to react to, oh, look at the sun, look at the sparkle, sparkle, look at the pretty color, you know, or some other kind of thing. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that's what's just making it very difficult to have some sort of rational conversation about what life means. As I say the word life, and for some people, life is that rotten tree back there. Life is this decomposition process, this consumption, reproduction, cannibalism, addiction. And for other people it's fluffy bunny with little wiggly nose. Um, it's soft and warm and uh, it's loving and it's nurturing. Uh, and it's a little seedling growing to the sun. And, you know, it's those competing pieces of the truth um, is, you know, what's being argued instead of um, arguing about what has to be part of, <clears throat> you know, the entire <clears throat> listing of what it is to be here, <clears throat> you know, what it is completely. You know, you have to list all of the ingredients and account for all of the costs uh, if you're going to do a fair analysis. Ooh, chicky poo coming. Me like it. Uh, damn. <laughs> yeah, I wish I was 15 years old again. <laughs> Shit. Uh, shucks. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, well. I'm not gonna be able to think now. Totally, uh, totally, yeah, totally, uh, totally finished brain function. So anyway, um, I'll be back. But yeah, this mood stuff just gets in our way. This this uh, romantic, uh, sensual, you know, this stuff that we feel more than we understand. Uh, we have a feeling reaction to. Uh, you know, gets in the way of a, a rational conversation about, well, let's understand the context. This is just photons bouncing off of leaves, you know, because they're absorbing colors and throwing back the refuse. And, you know, it, 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 it isn't what it appears to be. Um, you know, what we feel isn't what it is. And, uh, you know, we have to understand that more complete context of, you know, all the, the visceral organisms being forced to do their million to one odds of survival battle that's being played out here. It's all green and yellow and pretty colors, but it's really all made out of blood, a kind of blood. If they bled red, you'd understand. 
you could see every drop of blood that was spilled you know, to provide for your existence. You know, maybe you'd understand. But we should be able to understand through knowledge that that's the reality. Anyway, I'd be back, probably. Yeah, this is, I got an allergy. I think I went for a run and there's a lot of crap in the air, I suppose, that time of year. Now I'm all sniffly. Anyway, till next time. I never had allergies before. It's irritating. Don't like it. <clears throat> till, till next time. Ah, finishing up, maybe. Um, so, yeah, the truth of it is kind of simple. There's the payment in the terms of the suffering that happens all the time. And right now I'm fairly comfortable, but right this moment there's a whole bunch of people and a ton of animals who are having a horrible time of it very bad and there'll be other times where i'm having a horrible time of it and somebody else is having a really good time uh but this is the exchange where we're, we pay for the existence and uh it's one thing for you as an individual to say you're worth it or you're <clears throat> the best of your life is worth the worst of your life I would argue that if you had a real risk assessment and you said the worst that could happen um, is, is the, the best of what could happen is worth, is worth the worst of what could happen. Um, I'd say that's, that would be <clears throat> very unwise for somebody to say that that's a reasonable bet. Um, but regardless, if they're making the bet for themselves, yes, there's this argument to be made that okay you can't stop them uh, ethically they have some sort of right to invest their own welfare and their own bad judgment uh, but that's not how I got here it's not how people get here they get here because somebody else forces them essentially to invest in their judgment to, uh, to, to impose that judgment and that's what people don't have a right to do um, not without an urgent purpose you can't make the claim that there's some urgent cause that necessitates uh, being that bold with somebody else's welfare to make a judgment that important for them. Um, the non-existence of your best case scenario uh, is not a tragedy. Uh, the existence of the worst case scenario is a tragedy. And that's just the simple truth. The non-existence of the best case is not tragic, is not a horror, is not a, a an obscenity. <laughs> uh, but yes, the worst case is. And that simple logic just means, yeah, there's there should be no conversation about whether people have a right to impose this game on sentient organisms, whether it be nature or people or any force at all, unless that force, unless that influencer um, can defend itself. Obviously, nature can't write a defense because it has no brain. <laughs> it should be... Um, put in a cage by that fact alone. The fact that it doesn't have a capacity to understand what it's doing should um, render it incompetent to be allowed to control and that when we're going to exercise our more competent knowledge, um, yeah, it has to be exercised uh, you know, within the constraint of a rational argument. And there's no rational argument for presuming for somebody else that they wish to be a gladiator in a perpetually pointless uh, you know war of ego conquering you know or whatever you want to however you want to describe the, the fallen trees that they wish to be knocked down stood up and then knocked down <laughs> for no good reason. Anyway, enough of the video, I think. But we'll see. Might add something later. Uh, not even post it. But we'll see. You'll see. I'll see. We will find out one way or the other.
spider web. I thought it was very interesting. These stupid crab spiders. They put these webs right across the path. <laughs> you know, I imagine there's a lot of stuff flying by, but it's not even much of a net. It's just a string, a sticky string. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I ain't got to feed on deer. Anyway, till next time. Such. It'd be good if you could train them to be like security spiders. You know, they could set up a security network. <laughs> and then you'd know who was coming. <laughs> you know, just somebody walking in the woods. Yeah. But spiders aren't very smart either. Anyway. Sorry, I'm crunching. Yeah, I am. Here's another thing that catches your eye. I wonder what turns that wood black like that. Interesting. But anyway. Until next time.